Today, Ryzen 7000 gets huge overclocking. The first review of AMD's 5800X 3D, Nvidia's RTX 5000 is even faster than we thought, and Intel's desktop battle mage is a monster. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, it looks like AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs are set to come with some huge overclocking headroom. During an official meet with the experts webinar from AMD, the company said one thing that's really interesting. Specifically, their memory enabling manager, Joseph Tao, stated, quote, Our first DDR5 platform for gaming is our Raphael platform. And one of the awesome things about Raphael is that we are really going to try to make a big splash with overclocking. And I'll just kind of leave it there, but speeds that you may thought couldn't be possible may be possible with this overclocking spec. Now, don't forget that Raphael is AMD's desktop Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if he's meaning Ryzen 7000 itself or the memory for it. WCCF Tech seems to think it's the CPU, but Video Card seems to think he means the DDR5 memory. And we've heard about AMD's RAMP, which is similar to Intel's XMP profiles, so that could be it. Either way, Ryzen 7000 is set to get some big overclocks. Whether that's the CPU itself or the memory controller, next gen is really getting me pumped. How about I found one of the easiest ways to build credit maybe ever, and it's actually with a debit card. I know it's confusing, but hear me out. It's called Extra, and they sponsored today's video to tell you all about this new way of building credit. And guess what? There's no credit check. So what is it? Well, it's simple. Extra connects to your bank account. Then when you use your extra debit card, they take the money out the next business day. So you don't have to keep up with how much you spent or get surprised with some huge bill. But here's the kicker. Even though they're taking the money out the next business day, it's still considered credit. So at the end of the month, Extra sends your payments to credit bureaus. Plus, you can earn up to 1% in points with everyday purchases. So sign up for Extra with the link in my description to pick up your debit card today. Next up for today, we have the first review of AMD's upcoming Ryzen 5800X 3D. In fact, there's really been more like two reviews that have dropped ahead of the embargo. For starters, we have more benchmarks from XANXO Gaming, and as you can see, at 1080p, AMD's new Ryzen 3D does extremely well against Intel's 12900KF. It's literally only 1 to 3 FPS away when losing, and crushing it in a couple benchmarks. I mean, we're talking at wins by nearly 50 FPS in which or three. Finally is the full review from Tech Power Up, and here we can see something similar. At 720p, to show the biggest differences, the 5800X 3D is typically very close to Intel's 12900K and KS. And in a couple titles when it wins, it crushes both of Intel's best CPUs, though it does get beat pretty handily in CSGO and Civilization VI. Overall, the 5800X 3D is neck and neck with both the 12900K and KS in gaming, which is a huge deal given the 3D part is over 120 to 140 bucks cheaper than the 12900K and a whopping $290 cheaper than the 12900KS. Of course, because AMD's new CPU only has 8 cores and 16 threads along with lower clocks than the regular 5800X, in professional workloads it gets crushed by Intel's i9 parts. With that said, if you are wanting a gaming CPU, the 5800X 3D looks to be a great buy. Of course, the 12900K and K Yes, can overclock while Ryzen 3D isn't supposed to, but it won't matter in titles like this. Not only that, but the 5800X 3D was spotted with an overclock so someone may have already gotten past the law. Regardless, if you're interested in AMD's Ryzen 3D, I'll have an affiliate link to the CPU in the description. It won't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Next up, it looks like Nvidia's next-gen GPUs. Remember, we're calling them the 5000 series for now, given leakers don't really seem to be sure. Plus, the 4000 series was always a toss-up because Nvidia already uses the RTX 4000 naming scheme in their Quadro cards. Either way, in a new report from PC Gamer, Micron claims that their new 16 gigabit GDDR6 X memory has quote unprecedented headroom. We're talking up to a whopping 24 gigabits per second. So far, we've only seen it at 
21 gigabits per second from Nvidia's new 3090 Ti, but as Tom's hardware mentions, Nvidia could use this in their next gen GPUs. Now, so far, the most recent rumors have pointed to Nvidia using the same 21 gigabit per second memory, but Nvidia could easily have not decided yet. Either way, we know that memory speed can be a big bottleneck for GPUs, so moving up to something faster obviously makes a lot of sense, especially given how hard Nvidia looks to be pushing their Ada Lovelace cards. Fingers crossed. And lastly for today, we have a massive leak that was originally posted by Redfire on Twitter and later reported by Video Cards. In it, he goes over the configuration of Intel's Battle Mage, and it's insane. But before I get to that, remember that a little while back, I went over a patent by Intel that showed how the company could use a multi-die GPU to render graphics. Not only that, but remember that Intel claims Battle Mage is targeted at enthusiast level performance. So with that in mind, let's go back to Redfire. In his tweets, he goes over Intel's second generation of ARC GPUs that he got from the company's drivers. First, he goes over a more in-depth look at the new XE core design, but the interesting stuff starts here. Now, he's somewhat speculating based on the information we have, but the configurations have been listed as far back as December of last year, so it's certainly not a guess. Either way, as you can see, Intel's Battle Mage comes with up to four tiles, meaning similar to their Ponte Vecchio GPU, Intel is moving to an MCM design. Now, he thinks the two-tile configuration is the more likely, but even here, we're looking at an unbelievable believable 10,240 cores, which would obviously make for a serious jump in performance. But Intel could potentially go as high as 4 tiles, which would make for a massive 20,480 cores. For context, we're expecting around 3070 to 3070 Ti performance out of a GPU with just 4,096 cores. And that's with the Alchemist architecture. I'd be surprised if we don't get an actual IPC game, given this would just be Intel's second generation of GPUs. Basically, things are set to get way more interesting very soon. Of course, this configuration could be more for their celestial architecture, but who knows? Then again, the ELG underscore X4 may not necessarily mean tiles, though it certainly seems like it. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Intel's Battle Mage, or what about Nvidia's RTX 5000 cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!